We begin today's show in Burma, where the military junta is escalating its airstrikes on civilians. On Tuesday, it carried out its deadliest attack yet, when it bombed a gathering at a community hall, killing an estimated 100 people, including 30 children. Graphic images posted online and verified by Al Jazeera and other media show burning limbs at the scene. This is how the BBC's Jonathan Head described the attack, tweeting, quote, horrific airstrike by military jets and helicopters this morning, video posted by locals too awful to upload here, but they say at least 53 dead, including women and children. He continued, quote, I cannot begin to describe how terrible the scenes are at Pazigi, so many bombs. Bodies so horribly mangled. Members of Burma's government in exile condemned the attack as a heinous act that constitutes a war crime. The BBC and others have reported the military junta has increasingly used airstrikes to crush the resistance since it seized power in a 2021 coup, often targeting schools and clinics run by the opposition. This comes as the United Nations has warned of worsening humanitarian and human rights crises in Burma, with mass arrests, torture of prisoners, the killing of civilians and media repression. For more, we're joined by Mong Zarni, a Burmese scholar, dissident human rights activist, co-founder of the Forces of Renewal for Southeast Asia, grassroots network of pro-democracy scholars and human rights activists across Southeast Asia. His recent piece, titled Myanmar Military's Acts of Terrorism from the Sky and Savage Beheadings on the Ground. Zarni, welcome back to Democracy Now! Can you explain what's happened in Burma, this latest attack, as you understand it? Well, Myanmar military is losing uh, against the armed resistance on the ground that has sprung up uh, since the military coup two years ago. So they are increasingly relying on airstrikes, and they are targeting the most vulnerable among the resistance communities. I mean, the whole country is up in arms. I mean, literally, you know, every single community is involved in some kind of armed resistance against this uh, you know, 60 years old military dictatorship. And so they're trying to terrorize the civilian populations into submission. What happened uh, yesterday at Zabiji, uh, uh, you know, a large village uh, not too far from Mendeley, where I grew up. Uh, this is the, the, the Zagain is the, uh, the next uh, province or state from Mendeley Division. And uh, what happened was that the Uh, you know, about 800 uh, villagers gather to open the uh, uh, local administrative services or office that the military got wind of the uh, opening ceremony. And they decided that uh, this was an occasion, a uh, legitimate occasion to target civilians. This is not indiscriminate killing uh, of the mixed, uh, you know, uh, armed fighters and the civilian. This is civilian gathering. They knew it, and they targeted the civilians, targeting civilians for political gains uh, and terrorizing them. It, it, it's, you know, by any definition, it's terroristic uh, uh, activity. That's why, you know, I call this the, the terrorism from the sky. After the airstrike, Zarni, Amnesty International released an appeal titled, Urgent Need to Suspend Aviation Fuel as Airstrikes Wreak Havoc. Who is providing the fuel, and what do you think needs to be done? Well, you know, turning off the um, the flow of aviation fuel uh, that is transported through several ASEAN countries, Association of Southeast Asian countries like Singapore, uh, Thailand, and among others. Uh, yes, uh, that need to be turned off immediately. But Amy, the problem is uh, not simply that aviation uh, fuel is enabling the regime. What has enabled the regime uh, you know, to carry on as business as usual, the, uh, you know, the, the increasing use of airstrikes against civilians are three things. One is um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the Security Council's failure to take any meaningful action. As you know, it's paralyzed uh, body. And the second is... Uh, China's recent uh, resumption of its, uh, you know, uh, backing of the military. China decided that the, they are going to back the military because the, uh, the democratic resistance is at least notionally 
backed by the United States and uh, the European Union. And the third, and also very uh, equally significant, is this deafening silence from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. ASEAN has been a complete failure, uh, you know, in, in the case of uh, Cambodian genocide, uh, Rohingya genocide 40 years later, and it is failing when its member state is using air force to terrorize the civilian population, committing all kinds of like uh, atrocious uh, um, uh, cracking of the military that uses uh, Russia's uh, gunship helicopters, uh, the Western democracy's failure to really back the uh, democratic resistance as it is doing in Ukraine. And thirdly, the ASEAN's um, uh, regional bloc's complete and utter failure to lift a finger to stop the killings. Who else is working with the Burmese military? And by the way, just for people to understand, the term Burma and Myanmar, the military hunter renaming Burma Myanmar, um, we refer to it as Burma, Zarni. Well, who else? I mean, like, you know, a lot of— um, yeah, of course, like, uh, we could, uh, you know, point fingers at, um, that, you know, the, uh, Burma's immediate neighbors like Thailand or India or China that are involved in, uh, um, you know, uh, various uh, strategic uh, rivalries or economic uh, contests. But there are also, like, you know, massive number of Western corporations, like from the U.S., from Canada, United, uh, United Kingdom, European Union, uh, Australia, Japan, you know, and so the, this is not that different from what happened in uh, Tsarist Russia. You know, a hundred years ago, Tsarist Russia was uh, propped up or financially backed by French bankers and English economic and political interest. And the, against that, a Russian revolution took place. And that is what is happening today, because, you know, the, the democratic struggles don't happen in a vacuum. We are fighting a very, very steep uphill battle. And the uh, United Nations, a as a system of uh, uh, political states, are also failing. So there is so much uh, palpable rage and frustration among the Burmese uh, resistance fighters and the uh, society as a whole. And so, but the people have had enough. They're not taking it uh, lying down, uh, you know, the, 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 the abuses and, um, you know, years of repression. They are fighting. They are, you know, women are making bombs and involved in, like, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the sabotage operations. Young men, journalists, uh, doctors, engineers, literally thousands of them have joined the armed resistance. Every single Burmese family knows or supports or has a member of a fighter, uh, you know, that is against the, the regime. This is like, you know, the 1940s Europe with partisans fighting the, uh, the Nazi occupation. Um, Mang Zarni, um, two years ago, the U.S. government announced it's, quote, taking steps to prevent the generals from improperly accessing more than a billion dollars in Burmese government funds held in the United States. Your response to that, and is, a, is there a way to funnel that money to the Burmese people? Yes. I think, you know, the, the, the contrast between the Biden and, I mean, it was uh, uh, President Biden who, within 10 days of the coup, uh, walked on, uh, you know, White House uh, you know, press stage and then declared that, uh, you know, this, uh, the, he was going to freeze one billion U.S. So uh, uh, dollar. Uh, that belongs to the people of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi's civilian government deposited their money in the U.S. financial institutions. Biden froze it. That's the Burmese people's money. And 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 then on you know on the other hand, you know the U.S. administration, as you know, has pumped up more than 50 billion U.S. dollar and empty nearly all the shelves. Uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, Pentagon arsenal to support. Um, the uh, Ukrainian resistance, you know, we are happy that Ukraine gets a support and a unity of solidarity among Western nations, but we are fighting a similarly atrocious Russian-backed regime in Burma, and we are not getting a penny. Like, you know, so I think we, we are not asking for American taxpayers to underwrite our, uh, you know, liberation struggle. We are simply saying, we have $1 billion that Joe Biden froze. 
unfreeze that money and make sure that uh, the you know the corruption doesn't mushroom uh, out of that um, you know uh, the war chest and there are ways to manage this wisely and with uh, financial transparency we cannot fight and win a liberation struggle on empty stomachs and homemade molokov uh, cocktails when um, the, you know the repressive Myanmar military is well armed with russian made helicopters and you know mig29 jets and you know china's backing china's arm we need to have a level playing field we are fighting a, a, a you know atrocious 60 year old military dictatorship that has perpetrated genocide and that is perpetrating a long series of war crimes crimes against humanity and every grave crimes ever written in international law biden needs to unfreeze the the money. He gave a speech at the Summit of Democracy, the second summit held in Seoul, and he did not even make a mention of Myanmar while he, you know, he preys on bravery of Ukrainian resistance. We are happy that Ukrainian brothers and sisters received the Western's backing. But, you know, we should also be receiving solidarity and support and material support. Meng Zarni, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Burmese scholar, dissident, human rights activist, co-founder of the Forces of Renewal for Southeast Asia, or FORSI, a grassroots network of pro-democracy scholars and human rights activists across Southeast Asia. We'll link to your piece, Myanmar Military's Acts of Terrorism from the Sky and Savage Beheadings on the Ground.